Hello everyone and welcome to THM and on today's episode we're going to be tackling the front brakes on my original Yamaha Big Bear. This Big Bear belonged to my grandfather, it's been in the family ever since. I'm going to talk a little bit about that more later but if you want to see all that and more, stick around. All right, and today we got a special guest. We got my daughter, she's showing some interest in some mechanical work and abilities. So she's gonna do the front brakes on this side because uh, if you guys remember, if you've watched the channel before, I've actually been in here on this particular side. This is the third time. I had to do the wheel bearings the one time. I forget what it was the other time, but we're gonna reopen this one more time, revisit everything, change the pads because they have brake shoes in the front. Oh, and uh, Quick fact, did you know Yamaha does not make any brake shoes for these bikes anymore? You have to buy them aftermarket. These ones happen to be from Versa, so I'm not sponsored by the way, but we're gonna see how these work. And yeah, we're just gonna dive right in, start wrenching. Here's your pliers, honey. You're gonna go ahead and pull the cotter pin for us. I'm gonna keep talking the whole time because I like to do that kind of stuff. But uh, while you're doing that, also, I have a question regarding the cotter pin. And this is a question for you guys too. How many times can you reuse that cotter pin? Uh, any idea? It's kind of a trick question. I don't know. You don't know? Well, the answer is you don't reuse a cotter pin. If you've been watching my videos, you would have known that. You guys, you guys knew that though. I film them, but I don't watch them. Yeah, uh, that's true. That is true. She does film. She's usually on the other side of the camera, but... So a little trick for this one, flip, flip the pliers, get a good grip on it, and then just pry down. Yeah. Other way, yeah. I don't want to do it for you, but I want to show you how to place here. Might be a little bit of a longer video, but I, I promise it's going to be interesting, and it's going to be educational, because we're going to get in here, we're going to get it done. With the help of the plier here, you can grab it like that, and then you can, pr like, and then just push down. Push down, push down. Pivot it. Pivot! There you go, pivot. You have it. That book is by the way. Yeah, I know. Uh, for some reason, I was getting a little leak. Uh, if you guys watched the episode where I did the U-joints on this thing, I had to open up or remove two of the bolts uh, holding the guard on the back for the 90-degree 90, 90 gearbox. And I think I may have a little bit of a leak. We're going to investigate that. But, all right, so that's going to go right in the garbage. Just like that. Then you can grab the socket on the end of the impact and zip that off. I think I've got the right size. Yeah, I guess you don't have to. I was going to pull this off to gain more access, but you just proved that we don't have to. There you go. So, look at this, guys. I'm going to zoom in for you because there is nothing left on this one. So check this out, there is absolutely no material left. They are right down to the bare metal. So we're gonna be changing now, we're gonna put a new set in. Keep it, keep it level, there you go. Excellent, I got that. Okay, so this is gonna just come right off. So you need, I'll go get you a parts tray. Yeah. There you go, yeah, there's grease on there. You have to have a little bit of grease. And you can put that back on the ground. So now that gives us a little bit more access. Here, let's turn this so that the viewers can watch as well. It's gonna give us more access to the shoes. So simply all we need to do is remove these two springs and then there's these retaining clips as well. So once that's removed, the old shoes will come out. We're gonna put the new ones in and then we're gonna adjust them on either side as well. And another cool fact, well it's not really cool because it's it, it should be there, uh, but these are non -self, they're not self-adjusting, I should say. So you will have to adjust them from time to time, and you'll see that in the feedback of the handlebar. So it'll go right down to the handlebar if there's not enough pressure or not enough adjustment. So I'll get you some pliers for that, and then we can start pulling those springs. All right, so safety first, everybody. We always want to make sure you have some glasses when you're playing around with a spring. And while she's removing those two springs, uh, I was talking about how this thing used to belong to my grandfather. So he bought it brand new back in, uh, I guess it would be 86 or 87, because it is an 87. And I have a whole playlist dedicated to the repairs I've done 
on this thing over the years. Uh, not that it wasn't well maintained, just it was well used, I should say. So, got one. Nice. Nice. You just gotta do the same with the other one. That hit my finger. You alright? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you guys want to check it out, I'll link that playlist down below. Uh, or it might be, I forget which way I got to point, is it up here or there? Anyways, it might be up in the, as a card on the top of the screen. Might be able to get underneath, might be able to get underneath it with a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Hey, there we go. Second one. Okay. So they're both the same, so we know that. Now, these are the only other things that we have to remove is the retaining clips here. So there's two ways you can do that. I find that the easiest way is to grab the plier and then twist this so that it lines up just like that. You gotta be careful because you can break these off. So there's one retaining clip and then you can do the other one. What I'll do to help is I'll put a bit of pressure on the spring. There you go, look at that. Teamwork makes the dream work. Now these are also gonna be garbage. One and two, one and two. I'll pick those up after. We're filming, we're filming. Ready? Look how much more meat there is on there. Oh, see now I gotta go grab them and show the comparison. So on the left, we've got the old one, and on the right, the new one. So put them side by side. Uh, the installation is gonna be essentially the reverse of the removal. Yeah, that kinda makes sense, right? So we're gonna put the clips back in place first, and then the springs, and then we'll do the adjustment. All right, so we've got all the springs back in place, the new shoes are in place. Now we're gonna put the hub and then start to reassemble. Then we're gonna show you how to do the adjustment, but basically these two screws right here are gonna be the adjustments. So you want it so that the brake drum fits just over top nicely without any excessive friction. It's gonna gotta have a little bit of friction when you put it on, but it can't be too loose, of course. Uh, so you gotta have a happy medium there, and then we're gonna hit the brake lever, and then it should stop it, because these are gonna push out and do the braking for us. Let's throw this on. Don't actually throw it, you'll break it. I won't throw it. <laughs> it's, a, it's an expression. A little bit more. You see how he's still got some slack there. Perfect. So now we can drop the car up in right into that hole. Just like that. And you're going to bend it. And if this was a helicopter, you would bend this into the next cancellation. At least that's how I used to do it. So that you can't get your fingers caught. And it's not sharp. But... We're not flying this thing, so. <laughs> oh, and guys, there's also this little access hole. Yeah, I pulled so it that... earlier. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cool. So what that's for is, I was talking about the adjustments uh, not being automatic on these, is you need to pull this adjuster off, and you can gain access to the... Oh, did I just throw that car? Yeah, sorry. And then you can gain access to the adjusters through that little access hole. So now we can't get it on, probably because we've got way too much adjustment. So I'm going to turn these down. Okay, now try that, see if it fits. Aha! Now, you different. No, wait, before we go too far. I like to do it while we still have the ability to access it. So that's a little bit on the loose side right now. It has to be a little bit more adjusted. So we're going to pull it off one more time. So now that we're close, we're going to 
adjust it using, see how you can hear it? It's actually just as they're touching that shoe over here. We're going to turn this so that it does the same thing on the upper shoe. And that's where that arrow is handy because the arrow tells you which way to go in order to bring the pressure up. You can see. Yeah, I can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the viewers see as well. And there's the arrow I'm talking about. So if you follow the arrow and you turn it towards the left, on, in this case, it's going to make the pads expand and add a little bit of friction to them. All right, so that's about it. We've got the brakes adjusted. Uh, now we've got some good feedback on that handle up top. And my assistant was a little bit quick at getting stuff together. She put the lug nuts on before the wheel was on. But that's okay, because we're going to put the wheels on next. And that's what ex is really exciting me, because check this out. If my grandfather would have saw these, he probably would have really liked them. Uh, so these are made by Journey. They are a different size. These are 27 inch tires. So the Big Bear used to come with a 25 inch tire. So they were 25, 8 and 8 by 12 in the front. And they were 25, 8 by 10 in the back. These are 12, 12s in the back. So 27, 12, 12 and 27, 9, 12. So we're going to slap them on and hope that we got clearance. So let's see if we have any clearance. So if anything, this one here, I was worried that it would be close to the muffler, but it's not that bad compared to what the originals were. So you want to give me a hand, we'll throw it on. Wait, we don't have it backwards off. What do you mean? Do we? What are you talking about? Isn't this the up? That's the inside. Yeah. There we go. A little bit lower. There we go. Just like that. Okay. It's looking good. So, you want to go get the gun? I got this. So, I think we'll be okay. It's going to be close, but I think we'll be all right. So, another thing you should always do also is you should always end up starting these by hand so that you don't strip or cross thread anything along the way. So, these are all started. They're good to go. Go ahead. That's good. That's a very powerful gun. We're going to finish them by hand. Oh, wait, wait. Crisscross as well. So there you go. There's the back. Looking good so far. So now let's try this front to see if we can steer. Now the cool thing about these tires too is that they're not directional. So if we wanted to switch them around, if the wear starts to get funny, we can do that. At least side to side anyways. I know you guys can't see right now, but my lift, oh, there we go. That'll work. But the lift was kind of getting in the way there. This one? Yeah. So we might have to put it on the ground in order to see if it's actually gonna fit. Making sure the camera's in the right spot? Yep. No, that's because you're usually on that side doing exactly that. Mm -hmm. How's it feel being in front of the camera? Weird. Weird? There you go. Nice and slow. Excellent. All right. Did it turn? Uh -uh. Okay, well, you gotta remember this is our safety. Mm -hmm. so that we can't drop the bike on ourselves. So we're just going to remove it for a quick second since we're not working underneath it. We'll just move it off to the side. And, well, again, the lift is a little bit wide. Yeah. But it looks like... Yeah. Looks like... We have a bit of interference, and I'm talking like tiny, tiny bit of interference on the inside here, just by about an inch. Oops. 
I won't be able to go lock to lock. Ah. Okay, let's take this dog. Anyways, let's show you what I'm talking about. Okay, how come it doesn't want to focus? Ah, there you go. So right there, that tire doesn't want to turn because it's getting caught inside the uh, A-frame, or the, sorry, right in here in the suspension. So unfortunately, not what I was hoping to see. So the extra inch width, because they don't make this in a 27, eight inch wide. It has to be a 27, nine inch wide. So I can't quite go lock to lock. However, it's pretty darn close because otherwise there's clearance everywhere else. So, hmm, I wonder if I can add a stopper on the, let's see here. I'm not sure what stops the steering from going in and out or all the way, but I might be able to just limit it ever so slightly because what's happening is the tire is rubbing right here and just getting caught right on the suspension component. It's got plenty of space here, but just to say here, hmm, either way, I think they're pretty cool. You got it? Need a hand? Nope. It's a big tire. Ha! Ah, good job. And there you have it, guys. So we have some working front brakes now, which is actually pretty awesome. I mean, they don't work as well as you'd expect, unfortunately. Uh, there is a rebuild kit available for the master cylinder on these, and apparently that, uh, that rectifies a lot of issues. But nonetheless, they're there. They're working. And... Uh, Check out these tires. What do you think of this? I'm I'm stoked. Like this is gonna turn this bike into a completely different animal. Um, I can't wait to try it. But like I was saying, so lock to lock. I mean that's the lock right there. And if I go, oh you know what? Oh yeah. So if I go just like ever so slightly off of it, I'm good. So otherwise. I mean, I could probably get away with just trimming the inside of these tires and just getting rid of that edge and I'll probably be okay. But this is going to be so much fun. And finally, I would like to thank my assistant for helping us out through this whole video. You did a really good job. Hope you learned a little bit of something. Yeah. And again, for you guys, I hope you guys learned something out there as well. And... I mean, we're going to zoom in on her face there, but she's got dirt all over her forehead. It's kind of funny, but <laughs> guys, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next video. All right, guys, here's a quick update. Uh, I've been using it for a little while. And as you see here, this is the stopper that would limit the steering. So turns out, the reason why the tires were rubbing is because that little piece right there that I'm pointing at was, it migrated forward, I guess, over the years of using it. So all I had to do was knock it back on either side. And now, no tire rubbing.